be very happy and excited to uh, listen to the next panel. Uh, let me quickly dive down to it. We have an exciting day uh, of a panel discussion. We'll be talking about how we built it, stories of big businesses brands built in the South. Uh, joining the panel are Mr. Rahul Gandhi, CMO ID Fresh Food, along with Mr. Pawan Gopal, a CMO Nandus, Mr. Rajneesh Kumar, Head Digital and Direct to Consumer Strategy, ITC, Ms. Aruna Jathar, CMO Tender Cut, Mr. Vijesh Vijayan, Head Brand Marketing, Sunpure. And the panel is moderated by our own uh, Mr. Ruhel Amin, Senior Correspondent, E4M and BW Business World. So I'll hand it over to Ruhel there uh, to take this amazing conversation forward with the stalwarts from the industries. Ruhel, over to you. Thank you, Robin. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, I would like to welcome all my panelists today. We have a very special discussion. Uh, something we always want to talk about. Uh, uh, I just want to put in a little bit of context to this conversation. You know, uh, we talk about local uh, going national, even global. And today we have uh, companies, brands, people who have made that possible, who have taken the regional, local stories at a national narrative. And they have been the disruptors at large, uh, you know, if you see and an example for many who are disrupting this space. So without uh, much uh, ado, I want to start with my uh, esteemed uh, panelists, you know. Uh, the first uh, question I want to pose uh, with the only uh, lady that's on the panel right now, uh, I want to start with you, uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, my first question is that uh, uh, what are the main elements that are uh, scripting this new narrative where we see regional, especially when we're talking about the South India-based brands going on a national uh, scale. How do you see it? How do you read this world? Uh, okay. Um, so um, if I understand correctly, you're, you're um, asking about how do uh, brands in South go national, right? That's that's really the question. That's I'm I'm focusing on the south, but largely it's about uh, right uh, regional brands, regional based brands going on a national scale. So uh, now, if we talk about the south brands, what is driving that uh, inspiration? What is making them go on a national scale and get accepted in that big way that we have seen? Sure, Rahul. Thanks uh, for the question and uh, hello to everyone. Um, so I think uh, the population in India is, is very lucrative to avoid the national uh, reach, right? So once your product, and especially uh, for us at Tender Cuts, where your audience is present across the country and it's all about food and the meat lovers, uh, it only makes sense to go uh, national. So I would say, um, uh, you know, I would put it slightly differently uh, uh, and say that once you have tested your waters in South, because many of these are homegrown brands grown in the South, uh, because either the founder is there, in our case, the founders, uh, Nishan Chandran is based in Chennai, and it started with there uh, uh, with, in 2016. Uh, what we did was really uh, sharpened and uh, strengthen the backbone, right? The backbone for, uh, for tender cuts is really uh, the supply chain, the customer connect network, and also um, how you approach the audience. Once that backbone is strong, you have your infrastructure in place, your IT and non-IT which are really important for a brand like us, then I think uh, it's time to go national, right? Because you know the dynamics, you know the customer, and you've got your backbone ready. Uh, the only difference in the national will be that you will keep the regional nuances both in the product offering, the kind of product that you will provide, uh, let's say in the West versus the South versus the North, uh, and also in your communi communication cues. These are the things that you vary. But I think it only makes sense for brands like Tendercard to go national. Uh, and we have really had a very strong presence in Chennai, and now we are present in three markets in the South. So it mainly only makes sense to go national. Thanks. So thanks so much for sharing your perspective. Uh, 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 great. Uh, you know, we started with a very uh, insightful uh, 
way uh, to look at this narrative. Mr. Gandhi, coming to you, um, how do you see this uh, uh, the journey of uh, regional brands, especially the South India-based brands, going national, go, going all over, being accepted in a big way? What are the main elements uh, that drive this growth? Uh, I, I think South Indian brands have been uh, global brands for centuries. You know, um, Ayurveda is a South Indian brand. It's making India popular all over the world. Uh, a lot of yoga emanates from regions around Mysore. Yeah. Uh, they, they're not technically a food brand or a FMCG brand or any business brand, but these are Indian brands that have made South India popular globally. Uh, ID is trying to do something similar. I mean, the South Indian food is idli, dosa, and you know other stuff. So we are trying to uh, take South India as far as possible. Um, you know, we, we reach somewhere in India and somewhere globally, but yeah, the journey is quite long. And uh, in fact, the entire IT industry of India is also a South Indian. There are many uh, you know engineers uh, who are and 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 why does South India work so well globally? Whether because it's it's actually. Uh, the South Indian, uh, there are many unique things about South India, yeah. uh, and taste profile is one of them. And uh, I'd, uh, if I were to just focus on foods and, and within that to ID, um, the, uh, what makes it possible for a brand like ID to scale is because of the acceptance and the goodness of the South Indian values that the food brings. Acceptance because it is, uh, in our case, it's a staple product. It's, it's, it's one of the healthiest products rice pancakes are eaten in Indonesia also, in Vietnam also, in India also, and goes to Middle East also. So it has good acceptance and it has good values. Good acceptance and good values, uh, uh, when, when added to uh, a great product with uh, you know, distribution and brand, uh, can, can make South India reach everywhere. And I, I think that's one of the, a combination of these four or five reasons that I just summarized are possibly the reasons why South India does so well globally. Of course, I think, and IT definitely, I mean, who does not know that, uh, you know, the, the kind of dominance they have all over the globe. Uh, Mr. Kumar, how do you read this? Uh, uh, you listened to the panelists before you. How do you read this, uh, you know, this narrative that we are seeing emerging from the South Indian states? So, I mean, as far as the markets are concerned, when we, you know, look at South India, we are talking about Telangana, Andhra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and, and uh, Kerala. So these are the five markets that we are talking about. Within that, sometimes we get carried away with, with, with Bangalore a lot. Uh, you know, that Bangalore is, is a lot of brands emanate from Bangalore and a lot of brands which are based in Bangalore do not think outside of Bangalore. So you have to look at Chennai as a different market, Kochi as a different market, uh, Hyderabad as a different market, and all of them have their own nuances, so to say. So you cannot have the, you cannot, basically what I'm saying is that you cannot take South India and then cut and paste everything across the markets in all the four or five different regions. All of them come with their own flavors, with their own, uh, you know, culture background. So that is something that has to be kept in mind. One of the things that works well, uh, especially I'm talking about the digital con context or digital brands, is that uh, the language of internet has been English from the very beginning. But if you look at North India, the language of North India is... I mean, very, very popular is, is Hindi. Everybody, just like in South India, everybody will understand to a different degree of, a, a, you know, fluency, English. Everybody understands Hindi in North, North India. But since in South India, the primary uh, language uh, which is understood by everybody is English and the language of internet and digital is also English, I think the adoption and a lot of these new brands or D2C brands also find a lot of resonance uh, within South India when they you know, do their digital marketing efforts and all that because a lot of population understands the language of the internet and the digital. So you, when you look at, first, first point is, when you look at South India, also look at the differentiation within the markets. Hyderabad is different from, uh, you know, Vishakhapatnam. Vishakhapatnam is different from uh, Chennai. Chennai is different from Hyderabad, Bangalore, so on and so forth. That is one important point to be taken into account. And secondly, when you're looking at South India, you have to look at one common chord, which is English and a good adoption of English as a language and therefore digital and internet works well in the South Indian market. Right. Uh, I want to bring in Mr. Pawan uh, Gopal and Mr. Vijayan at this point. So uh, your thoughts on this uh, South India, uh, Indian brand going, uh, I mean, on a national level in a 
in a way that they're getting noticed, they're setting examples for other regions to look at. So I'll, I'll tell you, uh, uh, I'm coming from a background where I born and brought up in Rajasthan and uh, uh, all my life worked in Middle East and South of India. So it's, it's like two state story for me. Uh, I blend into the, both the region. But apparently I've seen, I've worked, apart from East, I've worked almost all the states of the country. I've seen a various adaptations of say, whether I'm currently working with the edible oil organization. So we, we see South of India more deeper. See, we don't, uh, we say the metros are the flippers because we get influenced very fast, but South of India's rural towns or the this is two or uh, uh, semi-urban or semi-rural towns. These towns are the ones who are the loyalist. And today, there, there was time when metros were the influencer market. Today, the rural is the influencer market for metros. You are able to crack that loyalty to them. And that's how today, say, post-COVID and uh, during COVID time, it was we all went healthy. And, and that, and this is a period which we, which also gave a, a gave us a upliftment of our brand. So we are a South, um, uh, South based brand. Started from Mysore with a twenty years, twenty six years of legacy with this brand. And uh, Sun Pure Sunflower Oil is the only oil in the country which can proudly say we refine oil chemical free. And nobody can say that because we have a patent for it. So whatever oil we, we use, I'm also saying I, I'm coming from North. So I grew up from a loose oil category to a packaged oil. Today I use a packaged oil. I say, oh, I am using a virgin oil. <laughs> I don't understand, but people don't uh, get it. That virgin oil or say cold press of virgin oil is not for us. People who are sitting doing a laptop bars. It's for the people who are sitting in the field. So that that understanding has been very easy to people to make uh, uh, for in South India to understand. Say when I go to rural and they communicate to them, it was very easy for them and uh, to understand, okay, this is what yeah, this oil or this product is great. Well, uh, it is not, uh, uh, doesn't have chemical or this is physically refined. Because today as a urban, we say, oh, it is a physically refined, you say, oh, kachi dhani. And I, apparently for my friend circle, I have got it. But in South of India, the way that you communicate, like rightly Rajneesh said, uh, normally we, we, we all sit in Bangalore, most of the guys, and we are obsessed with Bangalore. We, 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 right, you know, every Chennai as a region or Tamil Nadu as a region has a different uh, perspective of communicating. Andhra is a different, Telangana is different. And whereas Karnataka, in Karnataka also, you have a different way of communicating. And the North Karnataka uh, get influenced by something else. You are central. No, no, sorry, sorry. I want to interrupt you at this stage. I want. I have that uh, full question for all my panelists on that aspect. Uh, I would come back with that uh, in a bit. But I want to at this stage go to Mr. Pawan Gopal with his thoughts. Uh, so. Well, I think I totally agree with uh, what uh, Mr. Kumar just said and also what Vijayan said. The copy-paste won't work and we're definitely very obsessed with Bangalore. You know? Saying what works here will probably work everywhere else. So I think it's absolutely important for us to sort of establish the product market fit differently in each of these regions. So as part of Nandus, we've actually been operating out of seven states for more than four decades now. But uh, what we've noticed is the fact that in each of these different states, um, the, the sort of consumer needs and the way you need to communicate to them or what matters to them is largely different. And there's, uh, there's a huge difference between Bangalore versus uh, Chennai versus Hyderabad. I'm not even talking about uh, the rural market, but in the urban market itself. So the copy paste definitely won't work. It's very important to sort of invest a certain amount of time in understanding what is it that consumers in these um, markets typically prefer? Once you figure out the product market fit, you know, then then scale fast and really fast. That that to me is the mantra for success. No, I agree. I think you cannot broad brush the South as a block. It has its own nuances. You know, it's further more granular in its culture and appeal. Absolutely, and and here, you know, I mean, this narrative about uh, South and the North and the Pan India 
I think it started with the movie things when people were saying that how can you impose one language and call it an Indian cinema or a Hin and an Indian cinema, you know, there are so many other languages and dialects. Now, there is not only cinema that is coming from South to uh, Pan-India, even brand stories that we are talking about. I want to uh, come back to you, uh, uh, Ms. Jathar. Um, you know, along the, uh, while, while you have been building the brand and have uh, scripted a success story, at the same time, uh, there must be a lot of, uh, it was not easy, now, now you all have arrived, and, I mean, sorry, I mean, of course, ITC has been there for long and Unpure, of course, but some of the brands here are new. Uh, so you've arrived, you have tasted success, but I'm sure it had its own share of uh, stories, uh, the stories that we don't know about. Uh, one, a little bit about those stories, and two, what are the key learnings while making a regional brand national? Yeah, it, it's, it's a very good point. The learnings, uh, learnings play a big role, especially when you are a startup and, uh, you know, there is, uh, there is a lot of competition. So the good thing um, I would say, Rohail, is that um, the organized meat and seafood market is actually less than 5% today, right? So there's room to grow for, for many players. So, so that's the positive of this industry. Um, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, COVID played a big role in increasing demand and our consciousness to hygiene only improved as a consumer, right? So um, the brand started in 2016 and very quickly realized that we need to get our tech infrastructure. So one of the learnings is, uh, you know, if, especially if you're going to reach out to consumers um, and while we are an omni-channel brand, uh, the, a large part of it is uh, sales through a direct-to-consumer online. So uh, getting the tech right, you know, so you have to, like I was saying in my last conversation, that backbone has to be right. So your tech has to be really enabled uh, very well, and you have to experiment, learn, relearn, and really invest. So that's, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, we have realized and we are heavily investing in. In fact, at Tender Cuts, uh, there is a proprietary technology that processes over 500 orders within two hours from one neighborhood 300 square feet store of ours. Uh, all orders for retail and online can be packed, processed within that period. So these, these are the kind of technology investments we have made. And I think for consumer brands like ours, that becomes important, especially if you're going to be D2C. So that was one key learning. Second is uh, about, uh, I would say, in our category, it's about the reliability, right? So you, your consumers are going to depend on you day on day for their, uh, you know, week on week for their basic cooking needs, right? So you want them to come back to you and feel that it was the right decision to purchase what they cooked was really made sense for them. So reliability, I think it's a very simple thing, but how reliable is your brand to uh, fulfill this want of convenience, product quality to the consumer every time he places the order, whether it's online or offline. So that's been our big understanding and that's the focus uh, you know, we take. And I think based on the product category, that becomes very important. Understanding really what is the simplified consumer truth, I would say. Uh, so that's, that's a learning and that's something that we really um, focus on. The other thing um, in a startup scenario is, of course, uh, you know, you are going to be faced with uh, if this or that, right? If not this. So I think the best way to tackle that and we've tackled is continue to pilot, continue to be ready to um, experiment. And if you fail, learn from it and move ahead, right? So these are a few things because you'll always have that challenge. Is this the way to go? Should my brand communication be based on these truths or these truths? Because you're learning, you know, like you rightly said, ITC is an established brand and they have taken their journey. We, we are getting into those journeys and we are learning through experimentation, through our, you know, tech enablement. And I also, I would say at the core, a sense, the simplification of what the customer really wants. That's, that's what I would say is important. Absolutely. Uh, brilliantly captured there. Uh, Mr. Gandhi, uh, you know, earlier uh, when you were responding to my first question, you said that a lot of uh, 
South Indian brands already are at the national and global scale, which is so true. So this, uh, there is one parallel narrative sometimes, which may be misplaced notion that, you know, uh, that they are underrepresented, you know, some brands from the South India. How is, first of all, how do you see that notion? Is it uh, still prevalent so when, you, when you look at customer acquisition? Uh, um, I mean, your view and also about the learnings while you have built this formidable brand. Yes, yes, I agree. I think some of the brands are underrepresented and uh, two of the, or the four of them are on this panel. I think all four of us could be uh, bigger than what we are, uh, you know, because uh, some of the work that the brands are doing are is really good. However, underrepresentation sometimes is a function of uh, many things. And uh, uh, Pavan actually gave a very uh, valid point there where he said that the product market fix that you have may be very different for Bangalore versus Hyderabad versus Mumbai versus, you know, Delhi versus Dubai versus, you know, New York. The product market fit would be different. So uh, that is something that in any which way um, limits expansion, not only for South Indian brands, but for any kind of brand. But you finally have to have the market for that product to be consumed. Uh, that said, South Indians are there all over the globe. You find a lot of them in Middle East. You find a lot of them down in Malaysia and you find a lot of them in the Americas. But however, not all the brands have reached there. And um, uh, ID is a case in point. In our case, we are giving... Uh, food which has a shelf life of seven days. You know, I'm sure Nandus and Tender Cuts are also in short shelf life products. So every time you want to expand, yeah, and you are either in a meat industry or in a fresh food industry, like three of the four South Indian brands are here, then, uh, you know, along with the product market fix that Pavan spoke about, you also got to figure out the back-end manufacturing and logistics. Yeah, uh, so you have to manufacture locally and supply locally. Some of those manufacturing logistics challenge when multiplied by product market fix does result in uh, some of the South Indian brands being uh, underrepresented. But uh, however, I think the uh, some of the brands are mushrooming out and hopefully in the next five, 10 years, uh, you won't have the same question. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gumar and uh, Mr. Uh, Vijay, and your, your uh, perspective, of course, will be a little different. But tell me your story while being, uh, you know, building your brands in that region. What have been the uh, key learnings for you so at ITC, actually, our, all our office is based in Bangalore, the foods office. There are no like regional brands. We build the brands for the country. But one example, good example that comes to my mind is Be Natural, which is a Bangalore-based fruit juice uh, you know, brand, which was there, which IDC took over. And uh, the journey has been very, very interesting because the number of variants that we have today, and especially you know when IDC came in, we brought uh, with us the entire sourcing capability of the each of our model, which is there. And therefore, we were able to scale up in the number of variety of juices that we were able to offer to the consumer from just one or two uh, varieties to seven, eight varieties right now. Also, uh, give a new spin in terms of uh, the, the quality of the product, which is not from concentrate. So that's another thing which is going very well with the user and the consumer, something new as a messaging. And the products are being sourced now all over India, right from Kashmir apples to uh, you know, uh, uh, pineapple in, in Andhra, and similarly, you know, um, Bihar, lychee from Bihar. So the entire sourcing capability, what I think Rahul was also uh, kind of alluding to, was when, you know, when you have the right supply chain in place, because if you do not have uh, a supply chain, which is uh, pan-India, and these fruits are grown pan-India, different varieties, there is no, uh, I mean, there, there is no possibility of expanding and giving the consumer more variety in terms of the juices. Juices also being a very sensitive product, so to say. So I think that is one thing which has happened over the four or five years. The number of variants and the number of variety uh, that we have been able to offer based on the sourcing capability of the organization. So I think that is something uh, that comes to my mind. And apart from that, we have brand, but we have businesses. So we have ITC Infotech as a business, IT, a business out of out of uh, Bangalore. Then we have Marches Agarwati. Uh, Mangal Deep and Home Lights, which is in Chennai, Classmate is in Chennai. So they have their own journey. But I, I still feel that while Ma Mangal Deep started more as a regional brand and then subsequently, you know, uh, had a, a pan India presence and therefore different varieties of like Dhoop was not there, Dhoop was introduced, different variants for different markets were introduced. 
but i think be natural it comes to my mind as a great example where the sourcing capabilities of a large organization were leveraged to provide a wider uh, you know kind of variety of product to the consumer and therefore better acceptance so now be natural sells probably more in the northern region especially in the months of may june uh, you know whenever the summers are there because the summers are very uh, you know uh, severe in the north india so that's a good market and that's good season to sell so i think that's where you know that's the journey of be natural was right well mr vijayan and mr pawan gopal your quick thoughts sorry uh, uh, so your audio is clear now perfect so for 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 us being a mysore brand and then becoming a karnataka brand and the story we get to south indian brand so our journey was uh, it's not a easy journey but it was a lot of hurdles because the category itself is something which uh, it's the last thing on your uh, shopping list it's a staple it's a price driven category and a uh, lot of every 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 state has a strong competitor and the best ad is in this category nobody is a market leader everybody right. has there are leader in their own states so the uh, the pie is too big and the best part for uh, my, uh, the category what we we sell is that south of india was the biggest consumer of this category so while we we talk uh, we we want we are on an expansion mode we started with one sunflower oil today we have four different oils so five different and palm and manaspati and we are increasing and the capacity right, right uh, the it's not a product where for logistics or the the refineries to open up so so that the consumers and plus there is certain uh, uh, values what we bring in with the brand so uh, the quality metric is that that makes us drive more and more and that's why today we from one refinery to do we have three refineries and we are in in process of making two more refineries where we can give it to more northern part so we for brand from south to going up north or up east uh, be the best quality product say we have our own crushers we the do rice brand came from japan now we are starting manufacturing rice brand here so we we we, we so th- that's the growth story what we have from a small city the s- journey of this brand was from a small city to becoming a south india brand now aspiring to become the national brand so is the quality is right it, it's in my category is purely price play plays in is because it's as a crude oil what comes in is unlike uh, any other it's not about the sourcing sourcing anyways everybody is importing the crude oil and then it is refined and the process of refining makes the different oil so right. like the usp right. of the brand we say chemical free that's how the brand makes a difference and we are more than the more, more than just expanding we are telling the usp of the brand the benefits of the brand and that's how we are expanding by phase by phase right mr pawan gopal uh, your thoughts on this please Yeah, I think um, one of the most important thing is the fact that your brand is actually the sum total of the experience that your consumer gets to see across touch points. Like um, at least uh, Aruna and I are in the same category, where like she pointed out, there is there is a huge amount of market potential because ninety five percent of this particular category that we operate in is very unorganized. So just improving the buying experience, making it more clean and hygienic, making making the ambience better at the point of purchase itself is a big deal. And uh, as a truly omni-channel brand, I mean you you're dealing with customers who are walking into your stores and buying. So the buying journey, the discovery to what they experience when they're buying it, when they see it in front of them, to somebody who is actually getting your product home delivered, you need to make sure that that particular entire journey across every touch point, you you've sort of got the basics covered before you get into any sort of complicated strategies. The second point, which is absolutely important, like Rahul pointed out, because end of the day we are all in the short shelf life sort of a category. The supply chain is absolutely important, you know. And at least as far as Nandus is concerned, we we are very clear because we've been farmers since nineteen sixty three, right? So it's it's our own products that we actually bring to the table. In short, we are actually farmers bringing our produce directly to consumers. 
So if we are very clear that shoring up the supply chain, making sure that the quality of the product never drops irrespective of where we go is going to make it happen. Because in, in this category, the first moment of truth is when the customer comes in to buy, be it online or be it in a physical store. The second moment of truth is absolutely when he cooks it and eats it. If, if they don't, that's your true asset test. And that's when people keep coming back for more. We are, we are very confident in our supply chain, given that we have our own farms, we own the entire supply chain, uh, right from the hatcheries to every aspect of the product which is there. So I think it, it's important to focus on delivering that sort of delight at core aspects without worrying yourself about, you know, making things that much more um, innovative, which may not be required. I think it's important to get the basics in place and then focus on everything else rest. Focus on delighting your customer first. They'll come back. They'll keep coming back for more, especially in our category. Absolutely. Mr. Pawan Gopal raised a very valid point that uh, your customer, uh, you know, it all boils down to the sum total of experience that you offer. So here is my question, you know, while we are talking about a specific uh, region, you know, when it comes to building brand, how much does a regional identity matter while building brands that have a universal uh, playbook of building, you know, scaling up, there's a universal playbook at it. But when you put in the regional element, do you think you're playing on certain emotions of customers? Are customers actually getting swayed by such sentiment to, while building a regional brand? Uh, I want to come to you, uh, Mr. Gandhi, at this stage. Yeah, I, I think uh, there's no right or wrong answer to what you're saying, but it's a valid question, you know, nonetheless, that, you know, does origin matter? Does a local story matter? If you are in the category where local story matters, and we are in one of those categories where coffee you know, is one of the, where, the, where the story of the beans and the way they are plucked and the way they're chosen and the way they've ground, there's a very strong origin story to that product. So it, it may work in certain categories. It may work for certain brands who are trying to take that positioning. Some of the niche brands, for example, take such positioning. You know, if you go, um, uh, you know, in fact, what Pavan was saying right now, I didn't know that Nandus was actually, they were, they were farmers, uh, you know, uh, for the last uh, four decades or so. But they maybe can have that story in this category that, you know, we have our own farms, we hatch the best eggs and deliver you the best chicken, the entire supply chain is. So if the business model gives you that unique advantage, if the category, dis, uh, you know, requires it like coffee, then you can have that story. But at the same point of time, why I said it's neither right nor wrong is that it's not, it may not always resonate for every category, for every, you know, for example, Italy's are different in Hyderabad and they're different in Chennai, very different in Urupi and uh, Delhi eats MTR powder Italy. So while we can have, try to have an origin story, it may not work for a staple that's going to get consumed everywhere. But yes, in certain cases, in certain categories for certain businesses who have that advantages, um, like like Nandu's does, maybe yeah, it could work very well for them. Mr. Kumar, uh, your thoughts? So sorry. So your audio is mute. When you're looking at a regional brand, and you know you're looking at going national with that brand, uh, we also just to extend on what Rahul said. You also look at the portfolio of products that you have. Some of the products, for example, uh, the example comes to my mind is Sunrise. The spices that you know we've taken over it says mostly a bengal bihar mostly a bengal calcutta based brand and then what we are finding is there's this tremendous acceptance for a lot of spices that work very well across the country garam masala those, those are always there but the lot of other products which are there in the catalog which are more centric to uh, west bengal or calcutta as a region uh, like posto and those kind of products which are there very, very bengal centric also the communication has been very centric to the actors of you know uh, Bengali TV serials and those kind of things, and it is a very Bengali brand. But the products and the quality of products is good. And when we are putting, especially on our digital channels, the uh, IDC store, we are finding a lot of uptake of uh, Sunrise spices. And then we are playing around the the regional as well as the you know the acceptance of the national product catalog, which which products that we know that everybody buys. But since the quality of those products is very good then they will find acceptance in other markets as well. So you take what is best uh, of the regional and then try to promote what is best of the regional. Maybe it will find acceptance uh, in the national market, but also see within the portfolio what can be made national, which already exists in the current catalog or current uh, 
uh, brand portfolio of a regional brand. And that's how you, you know, kind of mix and match and then try to take a regional brand to a, a national level by mixing and matching the right product cat uh, catalog and the, the, the products within the catalog. So yeah, that's one right. of the things that we do. Uh, Mr. Vijayan, um, how much do local stories matter uh, in building regional brands, not only uh, to their immediate customers, but also on a broader national scale? Uh, I, I, it matters a lot in the kind of uh, category what we play and all. See, uh, the oil is something that they, which is very, very, very specific to the delicacies or the, the dishes what uh, regions make. So what you make, the oil, what you use in Karnataka, you might not use it East, right? In the that in East, it's a mustard. So like fitment and the product cataloging, bringing on, uh, uh, getting more and more region specific product onto your uh, stable, that what matters a lot. And that will actually help the brand to grow much larger. Like in case of ID, ID, the, the, what has, has come now, then they, they came out with the dahis and all that. So that was that was a success story for them to get foray into other the kitchen. Basically, everybody, what, what today, all of us who are sitting are the products which goes into the kitchen. And to enter a kitchen, you need to be very specific. What are you giving them? What is their food taste? Uh, say in uh, say certain places you have groundnut, so we have groundnut. Certain places they eat, the metros you switch it to rice bread. We have rice bread for them. Certain places you have today we are also getting into mustard also. So when I am going national, I am becoming very region specific. So uh, rightly what Rajneesh said, the communication strategies also changes. You be very region specific to become more of hyper local. Rather rather you can say region, you can say become more hyper local. And that's what uh, brings the brand uh, on the uh, onto the ground where you say acceptance of a national brand comes in. It's not as a brand which is setting a, it's like like in flag standing. I am an Indian vocal for local. I am made it in India. No, does that taste? That's that food taste goes into my that because that's the category I I play around. Uh, so today when 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 we say a Nando's or a tender curd, they when they sell meat and fresh, it has to be cooked, certain oil, and oil changes the taste. So the region-specific communication, the product fitment makes a lot of difference, and that's what we are playing around, and we are communicating. The way we communicate in Andhra, we don't communicate in Karnataka. The way we communicate in Maharashtra or Goa, we don't communicate in Kerala. Right, right. Mr. Pawan Gopal, I mean, coming to you, uh, very hyper-local, uh, in your in the appeal that you have with a certain the degree that you carry, give me a sense of how much you use the uh, local stories uh, around brand, brand outreach. It's absolutely important to be hyper local from a perspective of um, you know what's what's the most important challenge when you enter a new market, especially when you're a direct to consumer business, right? Um, you don't want to seem alien to them. You want to be familiar to them. You need to exhibit, you know, a particular sort of a familiarity that you will, you know, the moment they take a look at you, I mean, take a look at a store. It's not mandatory for your glow sign boards or your store signages to be in the local language in many of the different states, right? But it begins there. Suppose I were to write Nandus in Telugu as well as in Tamil in, in support to English wherever I go, I'm, I'm building a certain connect right there. The second thing is in each of these different markets, people sort of their buying journey or their preferences are different. So you need to be very keen on identifying what is it that matters to them the most, right? Like um, in Hyderabad, the meat eating sort of contribution is very different from the way uh, they would eat in Bombay or versus in Bangalore or anywhere else, right? So you need to be able to understand that. You need to be able to understand what day of the week, uh, what sort of meat is preferred, when, when it matters. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it works across categories too. And uh, especially when it comes to food, uh, like Vijayan rightly pointed out, everybody here is in the race to enter the kitchen. Um, it's, it's important to understand the taste, the preferences of each different household 
why even talk about pan india i mean within a given city itself with uh, everybody being very multi ethnic the the way uh, a bengali family would cook versus a malayali family versus a, a maharashtrian family or a traditional there is not traditional south indian family contrary to a lot of my friends who live in the north uh, <laughs> there there's there's a lot of difference so even when it comes to your value added products the taste the preference of a particular spice over something else you need to understand those and you need to be able to cater to that very precisely if you want to win this race but to begin with you need to build familiarity you need to communicate or you need to through your actions or at least tell them saying that i'm one of you i'm not somebody who's alien i'm not somebody who's new build build that familiarity break the ice and then things will follow absolutely absolutely uh, mr jonathan you quick thoughts on this uh, you heard yeah, your panel before yes yeah yeah so currently we are in three cities and uh, in three cities itself we realize one is your supply chain is also very regional right in each market your supply chain is regional the tastes are regional and adding to what uh, uh, pavan said actually even the cuts the cuts that you use for each of the cooking styles is so different and hence um i don't think any brand in this space can uh, in the food space can uh, you know hide away from the fact that regionalization becomes important and if you can uh, you know really um use that regionalization as a national story uh, you know even so better if that's possible for some categories uh, for some it is not uh, so i would say um we have a opportunity in the um different uh, multi dimensional cultural and urban situations that today our consumers are in uh, we have an opportunity there how we play it will make all the difference on how right. much share of the pie we get absolutely i think this is this is a nice uh, way of putting it like you know trying to go national with that regional identity at the same time you know making balancing both identities not an easy task definitely I have time for two more questions, I guess. So I'll go with my first one, which is that uh, so far a uh, lot of success stories uh, narrative is changing. Uh, we are discussing today, of course, uh, we're discussing the South, uh, uh, some southern brands, you know, based out of South India. So there is a national discourse already underway. Is there anything more? Is there anything uh, that the southern brands can do better or? Uh, this is the success story, the culmination of it that we have seen everywhere now. What more is there to the southern brand story? I want to start with you. Uh, I want to start with you, Mr. Pawan Gopal, at this moment. Yeah. I'd say, I mean, <clears throat> there are a lot of my colleagues here who probably, uh, you know, operated a lot more successfully in Pan India than where we are. But um, given my past experience, I would say it's important to. prioritize speed over uh, elegance or perfection when you're getting in and also what's absolutely important is to be rooted in knowing who you are and the way you operate don't don't try and change that um because if too many things within the organization and too many people uh, if you need to change that to adapt to something you may not be able to survive that particular change or by the time you fit all the pieces of the puzzle together um you know somebody else has already uh, beaten you at that race so it's important to do the right things the right things will sort of follow itself right. that's that's pretty much what i would want to say perfect um uh, mr gandhi your thoughts yeah i think um, is is there more if if the question is that is there more that uh, some yes, I mean, brands uh, could do yes I mean, uh, where is the story now? Are we seeing the peak of it already? Is there more to see when it comes to brands based out of South and the national narrative that we are talking about? Yeah, so I I think uh, see as far if we if we just limit ourselves to brands based out of South, yeah, and right. we say that okay, one thing that they could be regionally based out of South, and the second thing that why they could be regionally based out of South and they are offering something which is unique to South. which luckily in our case it does happen you know it it was a thankfully belongs to south and so do we yeah that's just a a coincidence i guess but in that case you know where uh, the brand is based out of south and you are offering something which is unique to south there the um, the possibilities are limitless 
um, I mean, they are South, as I, I, I'm repeating myself, but they are South Indians everywhere. I mean, you know, ID for that matter hasn't even penetrated maybe 10% households in a city like Chennai. Yeah. So Chennai itself is a, uh, is a big opportunity. Then TN would be a big opportunity. And then, of course, there are South Indians everywhere. So for, for brands like us, where uh, we're based out of South India and we are offering something which is unique to South India, the possibilities are, uh, are kind of limitless. And uh, if, if all goes well, if our product market fix is right, if our communication and supply chain logistics is right, we should be able to expand you know, in multiples. Mr. Kumar? So, uh, what, what Rahul said, taking a cue from there again, he, what limits a South Indian brand to go national is also, you know, the scale that it should want to operate. But also there are people in North India who would love his coffee or people in North India who love his idli and dosa or whatever the South Indian flavor is. Today with digital, the targeting that is available. So, it's not like you have to, you know, advertise on a hoarding and newspaper. You can always use targeting very efficiently to kind of use certain attributes. Uh, people who love coffee, for example, and if you can find those out and then have them give a trial of your coffee, you know, the brand is based in South India. A lot of North Indians, for example, would love good idli and dosa or sambar, you know, what, whatever the South Indian brand is offering. If you can find out those people through effective targeting, then even though your marketing budgets are limited, you can actually be pan-India using that targeting mechanism. So even though the brand could be based out of South India, even though the products could be more for a South Indian population, but there are people who you believe that will love the flavor or the taste or whatever you're offering. If you can use effective targeting mechanism within a certain population and reach out to those people, probably you can have them also, uh, you know, savor the taste and like the taste and probably become a lifetime customer of your brand. So this is one effective way of using targeting to, uh, you know, increase uh, your reach of the brand without spending the kind of marketing spends which are prohibited. So that is what I would say. Ms. Jatha, your thoughts? I think most of it is covered. Uh, I would just say, of course, South has a lot of brands which are growing and there is a narrative there, like you mentioned. Um, uh, you know, there is a big narrative, the brand, uh, you know, a lot of startup culture in the South. Uh, and we will have, uh, I think in the coming years, there will be many more. Um, and can it go national? And is there a national narrative from coming emerging from South? Definitely, yes. Your differentiated brand strategy and effective operations will help you expand uh, uh, nationally. Uh, and I think uh, the South brands are getting it right. So I don't see that as a challenge at all. So Mr. Vijayan, in your view, what is next for the South India-based brand? What uh, next? I think it, they're going they're going much larger than what was not been perceived. Say, uh, I'll take the cue from Rajneesh and uh, Aruna and Power. The brands right now, if you see, they 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 are creating their success story. They are testing the their waters to make more efficient growth. So I, I feel each one of each one of us on this uh, panel, what we're sitting. We, we all are going big and uh, the brands from south uh, it's not only it's north or south or east the brands which right want to hustle which want to reach out to end consumers and have a vision i want to make it big i want to have much and more households in my uh, stable they will do anything to reach out to and so Absolutely. it's not about south or north but yes uh, the hustling is more in south than what I see up in North or West. Absolutely. I think the echoes, I'm talking to you from North, so of course the echoes are felt here. Very rightly said. And I have just got a cue that uh, uh, we have uh, just like 30 seconds left, left. So I want to thank all of you on this uh, uh, panel for joining us and sharing your thoughts. And of course, bringing out the South success story, which we will continue in this series. Thank you once again for joining us.